You ready for a good day? What do you want to do today, Bob? You want to go outside? You want to go outside? You want to you want to feed Bubs? Feed Bubs? Good boy. Are oh, you such a good boy? Am I never going to get anything done? Because the Bubs need so many snuggles. Yeah, I know. Good morning, friends. I am going to take you along on a food prep day today. It is the weekend, and I tend to use my weekends to try to prep some food for the week. I typically don't do entire meals prepped. Um, that's not really my style when it comes to food prep. It's more prepping of ingredients, making different things in bulk that I can just have in the fridge ready to go for easy breakfasts and easy lunches. Today, I have a lot of ground beef to use. Um, we have been doing a low spend April and a low spend May, trying to work through some of the stuff that we have in the freezer. And I had two 10 pound chubs of ground beef in my freezer that have been there for I don't even know how long, so long. I got them for a really good deal at a restaurant supply grocery store. And um, it was a great deal, but you actually have to use them for it to be a good deal. <laughs> so they have sat in my freezer long enough. Um, I pulled one out. I, I decided to just go with one for now. Two was a little more than I could handle uh, today. So I am just doing the one. I pulled it out um, the other day and let it defrost. And so it's in my fridge, defrosted, ready to go. And I have a few ideas of what I'm going to do to prep it and get it ready for actual consumption. I'll probably use about half of it to make burger patties, and some of them I'll probably cook up for today. Um, and I'll probably just leave the rest in the fridge because I'll be cooking them up throughout the week. Um, I guess it depends on how many, how many I get. I might freeze some. And then with the rest of it, I am going to cook it up. And some of the ground beef crumbles I will um, add taco seasoning to and just make some ready to go taco meat. I might freeze some packs of that so it's easy to pull out for a simple meal later on um, in the next couple of weeks. And then also some of the ground beef I am going to mix with barbecue sauce. And I am going to attempt to make some, I guess you could call them sloppy joe pockets um, with my egg white bread. Um, see if I, I haven't made any like hot pockets, those kind of handheld meals recently with my egg white bread, but I, I did it, you know, several months ago and really enjoyed it and they're really good. It just, you know, takes some prep work. So I thought that would be a fun way to use up some of the ground beef. And then also I would like to get some egg white bread made, just regular egg white bread. Um, I will probably use my butter powder recipe, and I will have that linked. Um, I like the frozen shredded butter in the bread. That is delicious and wonderful. But like I talked about on my Wellness Wednesday recently, I'm incorporating some lean days into my into my lifestyle right now, um, some high fat days and then some lean days to balance it out. And so I want this bread to be appropriate for both the higher fat days and the lean days. So I'm not going to do the shredded frozen butter, but I will do the butter powder because the butter powder is actually very minimal as far as the amount of fat that it adds to the, the recipe. Um, so it still it gives a really great texture to the bread and makes it taste really good but it actually is still very low in fat. I think it's like, you know, one, maybe two grams of fat per slice of bread, which totally fits into my approach with lean days. If you're curious about the whole lean day thing, uh, I'll link my Wellness Wednesday where I went over all of the details, um, so you can check that out if you're curious. So anyways, burgers, ground beef crumbles, some taco meat, some for Sloppy Joe pockets, and then also, um, I think I'll do um, pull apart buns instead of a loaf of bread. And those are really, really nice to have on hand. So that is the plan for today. We'll see if I get it all done. Nothing like chickens to make you feel super, super popular. These are some cupcakes I made yesterday or the day before. They turned out really good and I actually have a recipe video coming for them. So look out for that soon. Um, and there's a frosting that goes with it. Oh my gosh, they were so good. I had one 
with frosting last night with a scoop of keto chow ice cream. I felt like I was at a birthday party with cake and ice cream. They were absolutely delicious. So look forward to that video coming, I think on Thursday. I am super excited to introduce you guys to a new sponsor of my channel. That new sponsor is Haya. Haya is a children's vitamin. There are so many things that I love about this product and this company, but let me just go over a few real quick. Haya was developed by parents who wanted something better for their kids than what they found on the market. Most children's vitamins are basically just candy in disguise and don't really have the best forms of all of the vitamins. And I love that Haya uses the most high quality forms of the vitamins and it's also without all of the junk added. I also love that it's very eco-friendly. With your first order you get this cute little glass bottle that is refillable and so every month you get an eco-friendly package that you just dump into the bottle so you don't have the plastic waste of plastic bottles every single month. They also make it really fun for the kids. They get to decorate their bottles. You can see this one is Renee's. She's seven years old. The kids absolutely love that. And anything to make healthy choices fun, I am all for. Haya is offering my viewers a special discount. You can get 50% off of your first order by using my link. My link is hayahealth.com slash indigo. I'll have it up here on the screen and down in the description. Just go to that link and you can get 50% off of your first order. Thanks again to Haya for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for supporting the companies that support my channel. All right, here is all of my ground beef. I'm gonna go ahead and get some crumbles cooking here and then start on making patties while that cooks. I'm gonna make four ounce patties. So I have three and a half pounds of meat here so that'll make 14 patties. And um, let me grab the seasoning. Let me show you my view out the window here today. Jeff and Levi are mowing. <laughs> Big man hard at work. I usually keep the seasoning on my burgers pretty simple, um, except for one secret ingredient that really makes them amazing, which I will show you in a second. So first thing, just some granulated garlic, and I really don't measure black pepper. Um, normally I would use granulated onion, but I am out of that. I just realized, so I'm gonna use some onion salt from Trader Joe's, which is delicious. Um, some smoked salt. Now this could count as a secret ingredient, but it's actually not the secret ingredient. Just whenever I can use smoked salt in place of regular salt, it's like, why not? It always makes everything better. And this is my secret ingredient for burgers to make them delicious. It adds some moisture and some tang and just some really, really good flavor. I always add it to my burgers and like sausage patties or anything like that that I make. It really is like the secret ingredient that makes it delicious. Probably like two to three tablespoons for this three and a half pounds of meat. And now I've got to get my hands dirty and mix this up. So like Lindsay says about vanilla, you measure it with your heart. It's the same thing with the Frank's Red Hot Sauce. My heart is feeling like that wasn't enough. And I actually am kind of feeling like that wasn't enough seasoning also. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my heart here. I used to have a burger press. Actually, I think I still do have a burger press somewhere, but I could not find it for the life of me. So I'm gonna have to do these by hand. We'll see what works the best. With my burger press, I use these uh, wax, wax paper squares that work really well, especially when you're um, freezing them. So I will see if I can just use those. Oh, I do have another kind of press. Let me see. I have this press for cooking, but we'll see if it'll work okay for making the patties. All right, four ounces a piece. All right, Let's see how this works. Oh, 
I think that's pretty good. We'll do that. To keep it simpler, I'm just gonna make all the balls, the four ounce balls, and then after that, press them all. All right, this got extra crispy while I was working on those patties, but that'll be okay. Hey, Levi, what, what were you doing outside? I was mowing the lawn. You were what? I was mowing. Mowing? Dad. Were you working real hard? Yeah. I saw you. And I saw like a red thing that had a circle in it. What was it? It was like the garbage. It was what? It was like garbage. You found a piece of garbage? Yeah. And you picked it up? What is it? I don't know. Are you going to throw it away? Yeah. Thank you for finding the garbage. Found it. Doing the taco meat, just adding chili powder. My my secret for taco meat is always add more chili powder than you think you're gonna need. Works out. Black pepper. We'll add some smoked salt to this as well. Why not? Yes, Levi. Um, I just had uh pepperoni. Did you know that? You ate some pepperoni. Gonna add some broth just to let, let the taco meat cook down a little bit with the spices. Taco meat is pretty much done. Broth is cooked down, concentrated with the seasonings. So I'm gonna let that cool off. And then I'm gonna get my um, barbecue beef or sloppy joe mix ready for the sloppy joe buns. I wanted to try to use up some of these barbecue sauce bottles that I have in the fridge um, where there's just a little bit left. They're just taking up room. Another great view. Levi with the chicken and Jeff taking a picture. That should be pretty good. Maybe a little bit more here. So I want this um, ground meat mixture to be completely cooled before I try to put it in any um, pockets. So I'm gonna, it's, it's already pretty cool and the sauce was cold so it shouldn't take very long. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna let it sit here while I whip up my egg white bread batter. Then it'll be ready, ready to be pocketed. So I changed my mind on the type of bread I'm gonna do. I was gonna do, my best egg white bread, just the bread recipe that has the butter powder and make that into the pockets and the buns. But I decided to go with the butter buns 2.0 recipe instead. Um, so the, what makes this one different, or one of the things that makes it different, is that it has um, acacia fiber in it and that gives a little bit more structure to the batter and I think it'll hold up better to the uh, making and making it into pockets. So I'm going to attempt that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a double batch. I'm gonna skip the honey and the uh, yeast step. That is optional because it's just for flavor in this recipe. And um, I'm just gonna keep it simple. I feel like it does give a little bit of extra flavor to the buns, but it's not worth the trouble sometimes. Sometimes it's just worth it to make it as simple as possible. And I don't feel like it adds so much flavor that it's bad without it. It's still, they're still delicious without it. So much butter flavor in there. I have my, my butter flavor to add as well as the butter powder. So it's super flavorful and 
just gonna keep it simple. So here are all my ingredients, egg white powder, butter flavor, salt, cream of tartar, gelatin, that's beef gelatin, allulose, uh, butter powder, egg yolk powder, you can either use the whole egg powder, two tablespoons of whole egg powder, or two teaspoons of yolk powder. I'm using the yolk powder this time and the acacia fiber. And then back here I have the arrowroot, just um, one tablespoon in each uh, recipe. Um, so it adds a little bit of carbs and you can leave it out if you want to, but I feel like it adds so much to the texture and the flavor that it's worth the couple extra carbs for that. And then these are the pans that I use for the butter buns and I will be using the same for the sloppy joe pockets. So I'll try to do a small layer on the bottom, put the filling in, also put some cheese in and then try to coat it over as best as I can. We'll see how that goes. Oh, I need to go grab my flake salt. So for the plain butter buns, I can put the flake salt on there. That makes it delicious. I'm adding in the yolk powder, the acacia fiber, and the butter powder. I just mixed it together in a bowl. I'm gonna not whip the batter at this point, just mix it until it's all mixed in. I just realized I forgot to put the butter flavor in, so I'm gonna add that two teaspoons in real quick. And, oh, I hope I didn't make a mistake by adding it in at the end. I'm gonna get these plain ones ready to go in the oven. Oh, I forgot to preheat the oven, no! All right, hopefully that'll be fast. Get these ready to go, and then I will do the pockets. All right, I'm not too worried about the gaps in here because the dough kind of rises a little bit. I don't think it will be a big deal. I am gonna sprinkle these with some flake salt as well. I put some flake salt on the butter buns, the plain ones as well. I'm gonna skip the brushing on the butter step um, on the plain ones just because I want them to be a little bit lower fat for my lean days. All right, these are ready to throw into the oven. I will let you know how long they end up taking. And uh, you can probably hear the beautiful concert going on downstairs in the basement. With this last little bit of batter that I made a giant mess with, um, I just threw it in this pan because it was deflating fast. And I'm gonna make it into some Italian herb and Parmesan cheese bread. I honestly don't know why I haven't made these in so long. They smell so good. I've gotta start making these every week again. The plain butter buns are done. They took 25 minutes like usual. Um, of course, I had to use my butter baking mitt. Can't make butter buns without that, of course. I'm just gonna let these cool on the wire rack. And I realized I made burger patties and I made butter buns, which will be perfect uh, together. A burger with a bun. I love how the bottoms come out on this type of pan. Like the texture, it's like crispy and it's just amazing. And I've been asked many times about tips on cleaning these. My best tip is when you're washing it, um, when it's in the soapy water in the sink, like scrub it together. And that kind of like pops out all the little pieces of you know, bread batter that gets into the little holes. And I haven't found it a, to be a nightmare to clean. Um, if you just put it down and try to scrub it like this, it is pretty difficult, but scrubbing it together like this with lots of soap and running water, 
it's not too bad. Barbecue beef buns are done and you can see the little gaps don't really matter too much. Um, the dough kind of rises and they, it fills in most of the gaps and if there's a little bit peeking out, it's not the end of the world. That's looking pretty done as well. These turned out really nice. I did want to make sure the bottoms didn't get too thin. It looks like this one, I mean, it'll work, but it'd be nice if it, if it stayed a little, the bottom stayed a little thicker. Maybe I'll add more batter to the bottom next time. I always try to be careful with the bread to filling ratio because it's real easy to make it way too bready and not have enough filling. And I think on these ones, next time I'll put more bread on the bottom and maybe um, either just put a little bit of bread on the top or batter on the top or just cover the top with cheese so it's more like an open face muffin type thing that um, would cut down on the bread, but then make the bottoms a little bit more stable. Ooh. This we could call a little focaccia bread or something. It sounds right. I did put some parchment paper rounds here on the bottom to make it release a little nicer. All right, I think I got everything done that I had intended and it's only like 3 p.m. So I'm gonna have to go like relax or something. Maybe enjoy the sunshine. Very excited about that. Um, I ended up chopping up a cabbage that I had in the fridge. So that's prepped for a meal. I'm not sure when that'll be for, but it'll be easy to pull out and either do coleslaw or like um, ground beef and cabbage or something like that. I have all of my patties in here. I think we'll probably use them up before they go bad. So I'm just gonna keep them in the fridge. And if they don't start getting used up quick enough, I will put them into the freezer. And then this is my taco meat. Um, not sure exactly what or when we'll use this for a meal, but it'll make a really good meal at some point this week. Then um, my husband already ate four of the barbecue beef um, buns, pockets. Um, and he called them pro joes you know protein sloppy joe pro joes there you go um so i have four left for probably him at another meal um and then my uh focaccia bread here and my butter buns here ready for me i ate one of these with my lunch and i think that is it for this food prep thanks for hanging out in the kitchen with me today and i'll just see you in the next video